refer back to. So please be respectful of what we're doing. There have been no negative health impacts that have been documented. There's many sub studies published in scientific peer-reviewed journals. And this is not just scrutinized in the U.S. We all know this. It's scrutinized it's scrutinized in the U.S., Japan, European ministries. There are hundreds of studies looking at biotech crop safety with feeding of animals and foods derived from ag biotech have been eaten since 1996 in billions of meals without documented health problems. EPA reviews the environmental impact. So people say, oh, well, you know, those agencies, oh, yeah, they put a rubber stamp on it, and then they're done, they never look at it again. That's just not true. It's, true. it's been reviewed. <laughs> uh, the crops that have the ET gene, after six years of commercialization, EPA did a thorough study of the crops that were in the marketplace and published in Nature Biotechnology, evaluating for the potential to impact the environment and evaluating any harm or risk. So it's not that this just gets rubber stamped or looked at once, it is evaluated again. Are these crops safe? This is a question that people ask themselves, they ask about. We turn to third parties. I am presenting you with the information that I have read and looked at myself where people say, oh, you work for one of those companies. I don't know, I don't know if I should listen to you. There are other organizations that have looked into this, the World Health Organization, the Food and Ag Organization of the UN, many academies of science, and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Europe. These are some of the organizations. This is not one person's opinion or three people's opinion. These are the scientists that make up the organizations that do these evaluations. Well, why do we ignore the science? No, we have to be able to the science and data that supports our viewpoint. So you may have only read information that supports your own viewpoint. I take the time to read the information that doesn't support my viewpoint as well, or the other data that I am looking at. And I think it's important that we do that. We see just rejection of the science and data. So I can show you science and data, there are some papers here in peer reviewed journals, but you may say, oh, somebody from a university did that study, so I don't believe what university people publish. Or somebody uh, did that study and, and uh, I, I just, I, I don't like the study, I don't like the data. We can't just ignore, we have to look at other people. We see a lot of fear and misinformation we see information that's meant to generate fear. The future of food video, many of you saw, there's a woman who says, what will this do to our people? <laughs> and I think it's fact. We need to look at that. We I do, but let's not, 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 um, let's not just have fear be the basis of what the information is. Don't tell me how to I mentioned that, um, scientific society. So these are individuals. This isn't one or two people at a university or one or two people at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This is the American Medical Association, the American Dietetic Association. Institute All with the same of agenda. Technology. If you look, each of these organizations has come out with statements in support of Biotech food safety. We're going to take questions at the end. Huh. Not, not a discussion. These just aren't individuals that have moved on. Move 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 Oh, don't blame us. Yeah, don't blame us. Questions will start at 8 o'clock. I don't have this formal presentation.
these were the two invited guests. I came along to ask and answer additional questions that might be asked. Okay. And the reason why we've been interrupting several times. Information that just sounds scary. We're, we're 20 minutes behind schedule, guys. Of course. We got interrupted. Oh, gosh! Thank you. Let's try. Not just in the United States, Japan, Europe, many other nations have independently reviewed this information. In Europe, we all know that some nations in Europe allow biotech crops to be grown. Some countries in Europe do not allow biotech crops to be grown. However, the European Commission and individual governments in the European Union have looked at the data and the information. Hurry up. Have looked at the information and summarized more than 15 years of research by 400 research teams. So again, when we talk about there is data, there are studies, you can go to, for instance, the European Commission's assessment, <coughs> look at what did they look at in terms of 15 years of studies and 400 research teams to look at the types of data that they use to evaluate, and they determine that the use of this more precise technology of genetic engineering and the greater regulatory scrutiny probably makes them safer than conventional plants and tumors because they are studied to a larger extent. And you may not agree, but I urge you, take a look, look this up. The information exists. There is information to uh, go back and, and look at this. So there are, these, there are many studies, but it is a technical topic. It can be difficult to sort through the technical aspects of it. You know, some of the papers are pretty easy to read in terms of you look at the introduction, you look at the conclusions, you look at the information in the paper, and get a general sense of what it concludes. Now, you're, maybe you say, you know, look, I'm not a scientist, I don't know much about this, so I don't know, I look at these things, and this says this, and this says that, how do I know if it's true? I'm seeing comments on the website, or is it in fact a scientific paper? We all know there's a difference between something that's in a scientific paper that's peer-reviewed, that appears in a journal, and commentary on the internet. We all know that. What we want to know, is there data to back up the information, were we, and were there results that were repeated in other studies, and what were those conclusions? And one way to, to see, you know, where does this stand? Because I'm seeing these different viewpoints. You can find studies that say these crops aren't healthy to feed to these rats because this happened. If you see 4,999 studies that conclude that biotech foods are safe to consume, and you see one study that reports on rats eating this food and some abnormality, the question to ask is, first of all, did all those other studies miss something? Look at that one study. Give it a thorough reading evaluation. But in science, what we do is we look at, did anybody repeat the study? In the world of science, you want to see that somebody else repeated the study and the other researchers found similar results. That is what the weight of the evidence concept, looking at other scientific studies. And if you think about the type of work that you do, if you've got a group of 15 people together that do the same kind of work that you do, I bet they would not all agree on the way to do something or not all be in agreement about the best way or what they think is is uh, true in a particular situation. So we would expect some scientists not to agree with a viewpoint that these crops are safe. What you have to look at is what percent of people who have a background that has investigated it thoroughly or have educated themselves, what do they conclude? And again, I point out these are not individuals. These are organizations made up of many individuals that are not only that the AC crops are human. So 
testing. As we look at biotechnology and apps, should this be part of Hawaii's ag economy? No. I'd like everybody no. to just take a step back no. and look no. at scientific studies and publications, commission fact-finding reports, government agency reports like the EPA review, but not base this on fear and speculation or suspicion of a new technology. Uh, I do have some <laughs> relevant, uh, sources of information that you could go to to look at. Um, mahalo, thank you for um, listening to some other information. I see three lobbyists here. Perlac is a lobbyist, registered state That's lobbyist. Right. I am registered as a lobbyist in the state of Hawaii. Uh, that is for a technical reason. This well, is my top two state legislator. He knows that I represent Monsanto. Good. And it, you have six lob Monsanto had six lobbyists here. There's another one here. I'm asking him to stand up. I'll point him out. Alan Takemoto, he's a lobbyist. Registered lobbyist from Monsanto. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All you have to do is fill out a form. And if you, you have make, to. If you make you have any to. donations as a lobbyist or any gifts that you give to. I didn't ask you why. I just asked you to identify. Yeah. Cindy Goldstein, registered state lobbyist. You go to neighborhood board meetings and say you're just a member of the community and GMOs are good. You're a registered state lobbyist. Your job is to influence legislators. Don't stand up and give this kind of bullshit report. Amen. Yeah. 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 Next question. Let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, if it contains GMO. We use the word legally 
yes or no. And then please let me answer the question. Please ask the question again. The question is, do you support Abraham Yes or no? I support the program that's at the Federal Drug Administration. They can label foods at any time. They can label foods at any time. The labels on the, the Federal Drug Administration says that labels are for nutritional purposes and for safety purposes. On labels, you will see where it stipulates milk products, tree nut products, peanuts, meat, because people have allergies. Who's Michael Taylor? Those labels are there for a reason. There have been no instances of allergies to GMOs. There are no safety concerns associated with it. Food manufacturers are free to label food non-GMO if they so desire. Uh, they can do that. They can do that. It is perfectly acceptable. If you have an issue, talk to a food manufacturer and get them to label There are plenty of foods in all foods that are labeled non-GMO. That defines Congress rules. One is to be labeled. Eleven senators voted in favor of having it labeled. There's 595 congressmen and senators. The answer is no. The answer
just plow it down and that's it. That's back into the soil? So it goes back into well, the soil. Well, if we take great care at those early stages in particular, keep it isolated from everything else. How that is grown. It can't breed and go wide. It is very specific in terms of isolation. And long before we get to the design, we're not sure of what that plant can or can't do. They're all together. Profit. So I had mentioned about our sustainable ag practices working for our crops. We on our farm use some of the practices that our organic farmers use with uh, some of our biocontrol of pests. We, we introduce sustainable ag practices and use those on our farm as part of our farming. And um, so, you know, in terms of the type of work we do and sustainability, I think everybody in agriculture looks at sustainable use of water, sustainable ag practices, and, and we do incorporate that in our farming. Okay, you know that for Hold on. You know that's a lie, because I'm from I'm from Wyoming, I'm from Hawaii. I'm not that like Florida. And you guys do shit about the environmental practices. So you are guiding for preserving pesticides along with Syngenta and all those other companies on Hawaii. 